Good day, everybody. Before we get into the content, I'd like to remind everybody that although I am a mechanic, I am not your mechanic. Please see your technician for professional advice. Everything in this video is for educational purposes only. I am not responsible for any risks you take, damage to your vehicle, improvement to your sex life. With that being say said, stay safe and enjoy the content. Okay, so you've replaced your brake light switch and your shifter is still not coming out of park. Well, hopefully the content in this video will help you out. Okay, so let me show you guys how to access the manual override so you can get your shift selector out of park and get it into neutral, drive, whatever it is your intention is, that's uh, that's on you. Uh, don't worry about this portion. I've been doing some extra stuff to the car. You do not need to take it apart this far uh, just for the uh, purposes of defeating the shift interlock. Anyways, um, you're going to you're going to open up your little um, cubby compartment area, whatever it's called. Um, sorry if I don't know the proper term. And then you're going to remove this lid. There. And then you're going to remove this lid right here. So grab your screwdriver, your key, your kitchen knife, butter knife, whatever it is, whatever it is you want to use to remove this lid. Uh, remove it. Let me show you guys this little um, pieces that are going all the way around so you know what you're getting into. Um, and you can see the little latches. Let me show you the latches. Where's my little puppet? Okay, so there's this, so there's these little pieces right here. That's what help hold holds that lid in. Anyways, um, here's the the piece you're looking for. Let's get some focus there. Um, if you back it up, back it up, back it up. And so when you're pressing, hold it right there. So when you're pressing your shift selector. Um, and it's not coming out of place. Let me show you where you're looking for and where you need to stick your finger, screwdriver, tool, whatever, um, so you can defeat it. So just keep in mind this little click, because as you hear that click, that's what you're gonna need to look for to match that sound. Um, and it's gonna be right inside that little, that, that little hole that we just opened up by removing that door. Okay, so we are, just to get you guys a closer shot, now I'm going to press on that button on the shift selector like I just demonstrated a second ago. And you see that metal piece that's going down, up and down? Right below that, you'll notice there's like this little white, oh, where's that pointer again? It's this tiny little, can you get that to focus? There we go. So right below it, there's that little white piece right there that I'm pointing to. Right there, that white piece. Okay, so that's what you're gonna actually push back. You're gonna push it back and you can use your finger, you can use a screwdriver, whatever. Now you're not gonna be able to see me do it right now because um, you know, it's really hard to get a camera right there. But anyways, once you push that back, you'll be able to get your shift selector out of park. Now, let me show you guys. I'm going to remove all of this um, and show you guys in the video. You don't have to remove all of this to defeat this lock. Um, if um, you like or you want to do some of the things I'm about to do, then yeah, you can remove it and do the testing on your own or for whatever your intentions or purposes are. That That's that's fine. I mean, it's your car after all, your risk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, let me give you guys a clear picture with all of this removed of where that white little piece is that you're moving back so you have a clear understanding of exactly what it is you're looking for um, if this wasn't enough to help you out. Okay, with everything removed, um, this is actually what you're trying to accomplish through that tiny little door that, you, that I showed you guys earlier in the video. You see this little white piece right here? This is the part of the plastic piece that is holding your shift selector in place. You see how this, um, so I'm pressing the button, you see how this will not go past that white plastic? That is part of the security lock. And you can see the rest of it on this side over here, right here. Okay, and then we'll go back to the other side. So if you press this in with the screwdriver or a long pick or whatever it is uh, that you put through that little doorway, I'm just holding it on the other side here with my other finger. That will defeat the lock. 
and you can actually get ooh, there we go dropping my light and you can get your shift selector in whatever position you need you need it in whether it's in neutral for emergencies or um you uh you couldn't find the fix and you needed a um you want to just temporarily drive it like that and you want to leave a screwdriver sticking in there whatever it is you want to do um as you can see that is the fix but you gotta remember oh actually well i have this up here can i get up here and down up 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 up, up. there we go okay so here's that here's that locking mechanism right here Damn, look at that so that's what you're defeating right there you're just sliding this back enough for the shift selector um to not be in the lock position and you can move it freely okay so you have to remember when you go back to the park position it's going to lock again and you have to re-defeat that again until you get your problem fixed um so here i'm pushing i'm pushing on the brake and i mean i could turn on the key all day long and mess with that but until i defeat this plastic to break it or get it out of the way i won't be able to get it out of shift or out of park um Okay, so let me show you guys where that fuse panel is. And as you can see, I'm going right underneath the driver's side panel. Uh, yes, it is helpful if you have a nice little flashlight. Uh, your phone flashlight should be more than, more than enough. But... Okay, and that little box right there with all the tiny little boxes and numbers, that's your fuse box, fuse panel, or junction box, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just grab these little tabs right here. You're just going to squeeze them together, and just like I'm doing. And that whole lid should pop right off. And just how I took off that lid, that is the orientation of the fuses in there. So exactly how you see this box, that's how they're numbered and labeled in there. And right behind this relay is where most of the ones you're going to be needing to remove and check. And this number 10 that I'm pointing to right here, right above that 20. Uh oh, there we go. My finger's in the way. There we go. That 10 right there that I'm pointing to, that's the number five fuse. That 20 below it, that's number six. This is seven, and this is eight. So eight, seven, six, five. So, so you need five, and then number two, which is behind this relay. Um, so number two behind the relay, and number five. Those are the two fuses that you want to check. Let me show you guys in the book and um, a good uh, picture of that little lid so you guys can have a better idea of what you're going to be looking for. Okay, once you've uh, located your fuses and you're in that uh, fuse box panel, um, here are the two main relays that you should be checking for that will hopefully lead to quick resolution. Um, the first and easy one um, that screamed out to me, hey, this is the shift interlock problem, is fuse number five. It, said, it literally reads uh, transmission shifter solenoid. And I was like, oh, well, that's got to be it. Um, so you'll see right here, it's the fifth one down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so pull that one. Check it out. Uh, see if it's in good shape. Uh, if you have a few tester te fuse tester, test it. Um, or if you know what you're looking for, then great, fantastic. And if you want to replace it for good measure, um, you know, these things are really, really cheap. You can buy a whole box of them for five bucks. They'll come in different shapes, sizes, and variations. It's a 10 amp fuse. Um, and um, yeah, so the other one, which ended up actually being my problem, and which is why um, the, the owner originally wanted to replace the brake switch, my problem actually ended up being fuse number two. Um, and fuse number two is a 15 ampere and it's brake on off switch that fuse was a mess as soon as i replaced this 15 amp fuse this thing worked beautifully and i had no more problems okay in the off chance that the easy fix or it was not an easy fix uh did not work for you all your fuses were good to, were good to go uh the relays your brake switch all that good stuff was good to go and you're thinking to yourself can I test the actual lock mechanism um, for the shift selector? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, and a simple 12 volt battery will do. Um, you can use your car battery. You can haul it in here if you want to, but if you have a basic DeWalt uh, compatible battery like I do, just hook it up to your B minus and your B plus. They're usually on the outside. Uh, the 20 volt will do it too. Uh, I just don't recommend using that one uh, for too long because 20 volts is way more than enough voltage required for uh, these components. They are 12 volt components after all. So anyways, 
uh, with B to, uh, with my B minus and um, B plus hooked up. Uh, you can see uh, right here. This is the actual. This is the actual uh, lift uh, shift lock mechanism um, that you're going to be testing. Hold on, there we go. Get that focus in there. There we go. So that you're going to be testing right here. So all you got to do is follow these two black wires to this connector right here. So you'll be hooking up the B plus to the red. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Getting rid of the lighting there. Sorry about that, guys. So hook up the B plus to the red and the B minus to the black. So just keep so just keep in mind which one's the red and which one is the black because they're both the same color on the other side of the connector. So let's get this disconnected and let's get let's hook up some power live to it and you can see the mechanism live in action and you'll know if your mechanism is good or not. These plastic things always kick my butt. There we go. You can kind of see there. You have to kind of lift this up to get it past this little tab. This is the tab that's keeping this connector locked in place. But anyways, so we got the the right connector is the red and the left is the black. Uh, please use extra caution when doing this so you don't electrocute yourself or harm yourself or destroy your components, whatever. Uh, full disclaimer on the video. So there we go. And right here, you should hear the click. And I'll get my arm out of the way here in a second. So let me get my arm out of the way. And you'll be able to see it. Is that focused? Okay, there we go. So as I connect, oh, I missed, I made some sparks there. You guys get a fireworks show today. Just get those wires back in there. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. And bam. You can see that component will move all the way back, all the way forward, all the way back, all the way forward. And that's how you know that if you're getting power to this component, uh, the sh shift lock mechanism, whatever the official term is, that's how you know this is functioning and you do not need to replace it. Now, if you're applying power directly to this and you've hot wired to something else and you know your battery's good, you checked your connections and all that good stuff and you're still not getting this component to react, then this is the bad component and that's what you need to replace. So you don't have to keep defeating it manually. Okay, so you've manually applied power and you wanna to check to see if you have power coming from the car um, to that um, lock component. Um, so the best way I have found to do this is with a test light. You can grab just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. They're less than $10, they're super awesome. Anyways, you will need the key uh, for this part. So stick the key in the ignition um, and stick it in the number two position or accessory mode it's one notch right below right before when you start the vehicle now in this red um, connection that's where you're going to stick your test light in and initially you shouldn't see anything oh, sorry, there's an extra wire from something else you shouldn't see anything but with the probe in when you tap on the brake or uh, hit the brake and hold it down you should see that test light light up. And if you see that, that's all it takes. Cause once it, once it unlocks it, it'll leave just enough little power uh, to leave that uh, unlocked solenoid um, energized and the uh, shift interlock unlocked and you'll be able to shift out of place. Now, if you are hitting the brakes and you verify you have good ground and you are not getting this light, you're probably not getting power to this cable and your problem is somewhere else. And here, I'll even show you guys. Uh, bend the camera over so we can see the little interlock. So right now I'm hitting the brake. And bring it over here real quick. So let's see, I'm going to connect the little connector. Come back over to the interlock. And I'll tap on the brake. And you see that. Bam. So right there, I can shift out of place. Fantastic. Oh, sorry, I did forget to mention a really, really good ground to use um, if your cigarette lighter is functioning is right on the rim of the cigarette lighter. That's usually battery negative. So, so long as you're making good contact with that battery negative, um, you can clip it right on there 
go ahead and uh, bring it closer. You can clamp it right on there, and so long as you know it doesn't uh, disconnect on its own or whatever, then uh, you know you've got a, a a good negative. That way, when you stick this probe on any power or positive, um, it should light right up like mine did. Hope you enjoyed the content. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. If there were any tips, tricks of the trade that you would like to share, please leave them in the comments below so you can help any other technicians, DIYers. As always, please stay safe. Have a great one, everybody.